Hello and welcome to this clip on uncertainty in practical chemistry. One of the things you'll need to have um, when you're an A-level chemist is an awareness of what uncertainty is and how we can use uh, the correct type of apparatus to try and minimise its effects on our measurements. Now sometimes, it doesn't matter how careful we are, the piece of equipment that we're using may have a certain amount of built-in error that's printed on the side by the manufacturer. And what we do is we use percentage uncertainty to take account of this when we're making conclusions or making statements about things that we've measured. So this clip will cover all those three things and hopefully give you a bit of insight and awareness of this um, potentially um, confusing area, but it's actually quite simple really once you know what it is. So before we begin, let's have a look at a few simple terms that are used when we're talking about error or uncertainty. Now, I wouldn't suggest you have to go away and memorise these, but I wouldn't suggest ignoring them either, because having a working knowledge of what they are will allow you to work around the concept of error when you're doing practicals a lot more easily, and then think about how you can deal with error with a lot more confidence rather than just thinking of it as something you know how to start dealing with since you are doing GCSE. So dealing with error with a degree of, not so much intelligence, but with a degree of confidence, I would say, is uh, most definitely an advanced level skill, an A-level chemistry skill as opposed to a GCSE skill. So what this clip will, in, 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 what my intentions are anyway with this clip, are to try and at least get you started on having a bit of a feel for error and how you can deal with it. Okay, so looking at some of these, you may see that I've referred to equipment in passing. Uh, let's have a look at some examples of equipment and what the error ranges or uncertainty ranges might be for them. And uh, then have a think about what sort of equipment you might choose depending on the job you're trying to do. So the thing to think about is the size of the measurement you're making. If you're measuring a large volume, for example, then any uncertainty that's built into that measurement due to equipment is going to have a relatively small effect. If you're measuring a very small volume, then any uncertainty will have a much larger effect. Let me try and, and, and illustrate this for you. So let's think about this real-life example. If you had to measure out 10 centimetres cubed of a liquid, such as concentrated HCl, you'd have to measure it out extremely carefully, for obvious reasons, because it's highly corrosive. If you don't use enough, the reaction you're trying to do might not work, but if you use too much, then not only might the reaction go out of control, but you're putting yourself at risk as well. So you have to know that what you're doing is reliable. So I'm going to bring up a couple of photos, and I'm going to ask you to think about which piece of apparatus do you think you would choose to be as accurate as possible. So we've got five pieces of equipment that could be likely candidates to do this for you. I've also included um, general error measurements or uncertainty ranges that might come with these. Now you can see for the, the measuring cylinder, for example, it's uh, quite clearly printed on the glass itself. But you can see it's plus or minus 0 0.1 centimetres cubed. Um, so let's now have a think about what we're trying to do. So I've highlighted up on the top what you need to do. Imagine you have to measure out 10 centimetres cubed of a liquid very carefully. Take a couple of moments and see if you can come up with um, maybe a couple of pieces of equipment that would be appropriate for that job. So here's some possible ways to think about those. Uh, the more times you have to use a piece of equipment, the more times you, you um, multiply the error, and the more times you risk spilling it. So if you're dealing with something like concentrated HCl, very little in mind too. So the basic message is, um, be quite picky about the piece of equipment that you're using. Normally in a chemistry lab it will be provided for you at A-level, but let's say you're at university, you'd be expected to have an, a little bit of common sense here and choose the appropriate piece of equipment depending on the level of reliability you require. So let's have a look at percentage error, because that's what will come up in some of the exams you might do. 
So it might be worth uh, pausing the video and getting this calculation down on a flashcard. And uh, then I'll put up about four or five examples for you to have a little go at. And uh, you can try them out, pause the video, and then see if we agree. Okay, so you might like to copy these down and uh, give them a go. There's some simple examples. And pause the video, and then when you're ready to come back and have a look, um, I'll uh, show you how you could have worked it out. Okay, did you get that first one as 0.08%? So I made a slight adjustment to the third one, just saying plus or minus 0 0.0005 grams, which I've noticed that wasn't on there. And I asked you to go away and copy these. So if you want to just quickly double check before I've written that down. We can now try the second and the third one. So you can see quite clearly the massive improvement in percentage and certainty from using the three decimal place top hand balance. It's a reduction of 4.5% in the percentage and certainty of your measurement. So there's one more thing that may come up in a paper, and that would be to ask you to predict or decide which piece of apparatus or what part of the procedure has the greatest percentage uncertainty. So we might ask you this question in terms of reliability. Now looking at it, it's fairly obvious. It's obviously going to be the use of the two decimal place top hand balance, but be careful how you answer this because you need to actually explain why that's the reason, why that's the, the most unreliable part of the procedure, not just the fact that it is. Although the question doesn't ask you to explain why, it's always a good idea to try to put an explanation in, even if it's a few extra words, just to guarantee the mark. So what I've not only done is chosen the two decimal places top band balance, but I've also said that its high percentage uncertainty was caused by the small measurement being made. So it shows that I've got an awareness not just of percentage error, but what causes higher percentage error in terms of the size of the measurement being done. So try to bear these in mind when you're doing these types of questions in the future. So hopefully this was fairly useful and gave you a, an introduction at least to the idea of uncertainty in practicals. Um, there's one more thing I'd like to just quickly mention, and that's the use of uncertainty when you're doing titrations. So that requires one more slide. So when you're doing titrations and you're working out the percentage uncertainty, be careful, because percentage uncertainty only applies to one individual single measurement. If you look on the little diagram I've imported, you can see that there's two, um, two accurate titers that have been ticked, and they will be used to take an average of those two values. For each of those titers, you will have applied a percentage uncertainty. But to get an average titer, you'll have had to do the measurement twice. So as a result, that will have to be taken into account when working out the error or uncertainty to do with obtaining a, an average titer. So, if you look carefully, you'll see that what we're actually doing is we're doubling the uncertainty range because you're doing the same thing twice. So there's the same uncertainty range has to be doubled up if you do the same thing twice. Because obviously the more times you do something, the more chances are you have of making a mistake. So if, let's say, the error range for a certain procedure is plus or minus x, then if you do that procedure twice, then it's plus or minus 2x. If you do it three times, it's plus or minus 3x. So here what we do is we multiply 0 0.05, which is the uncertainty range for one measurement in burette. Multiply by that by 2, gives you 0 0.1. Divide that by the calculated average title, which is 25.65. Multiply by 100 gives you 0.39%. Okay, so that's the end of the clip, and I uh, hope it's been useful, and thanks for listening.